The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. And by Mosaic, your Lightroom photos automatically on every device and backed up. And by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 87. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. Last week was our first show for 2013 where we introduced a whole new look and some new sponsors. If you haven't had a chance to listen to last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, listen with the popular Stitcher and TuneIn radio apps, and now watch on your HGTV through TiVo. Hey, so Joe, we are back. How you doing, man? Good, good. We're here, Trev. We are here. (laughs) Big week this week with CES, right? Very big week. Lots going on. Lots going on, all kinds of crazy news coming out of CES, all new kinds of products and, I mean, everything, the range. I mean, it brings back uh, good memories. I used to go to CES, you know, I was in the uh, software industry for many, 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 many moons. And uh, I just, you know, we used to be um, at CES every single year um, back in the 90s, like, uh, you know, like clockwork. So yeah. a lot of good memories. I, I really enjoyed see, uh, seeing all the new gadgets and stuff to, to come out. So I think this show, we we have to talk about it. You know, not only is the photography stuff really interesting, but all the tech stuff. We know as photographers, probably 80% of our time is, you know, dealing with tech. You know, we're sitting yeah. in front of a computer or, you know, our iPads, laptops or something. So yep. I think yep. it's we all, all need to stay on top of the, the tech industry. I mean, we may not have the need or interest in everything, but, you know, you need to at least be aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this so, will be our CES news show. I know. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I mean, we were kind of skimming through all the stuff that, that occurred and there's just a lot of hot stuff. One of the things that popped through um, was the uh, the Canon, the new uh, compact Canon that just came out? The N, I think it's called the PowerShot yeah, N. The PowerShot N. Did you see how small that is? Is that just nuts? This thing is tiny, man. It's like three inches by two and a half inches and like one point two inches deep. They say. Yeah, it's which, a little bit thick, but it's so small. I mean, they showed it in like tiny. guy's hand, and it's like tiny. Yeah, I mean, literally tiny. I mean, it's probably that thick. You know, it's a one point two thickness because it does have this beautiful, you know, back screen that just pops out and rotates. And yeah, it's one of those tilting uh, very angle screens. Yeah. uh, And, you know, you know, as photographers, we don't use these very often. But I tell you what, you know, I was just at this this concert not too long ago. It was a couple, you know, a couple weeks back um, just before the holidays. And I tell you what, I would give anything to have, you know, a camera during this show that actually would fold down so I would actually be able to hold it over my head yep. and be able to take a photograph and see what I'm getting instead of just like, you know, uh, you know, uh, just snap and pray for the best kind of thing. So, yeah, I hear um, you. I, I hear like you. it. I like these very angle lenses a lot. Um, you know, maybe on your big DSLRs, they're not always necessary if you're using the, the you know, the viewfinder, but... You know, if you're shooting video or what have you, I mean, it might be nice to be able to have that that pop out. And yeah. a camera like this is really cool from the standpoint that, you know, if you really just want a 12 megapixel camera that you can jam in your pocket when you're going out, you want something a little bit higher res, you want something with a with an optical zoom, you know, right. then something like this is kind of pretty good. This is also a good camera for the spouse, right? You know, maybe maybe they're not the photographer in the house, but of course they like to take pictures. So you know, yeah. I think at two ninety nine ninety nine, that's that's what the retail is going to be on it. Three hundred bucks. Yeah, that's about right. You know, I like also is you know most of these cameras that are coming out are now fully um, integrated with uh, Wi Fi, which that's oh, yeah. really cool. So you yeah. know, just like normally you would just pull out your iPhone, take some shots, you know, throw it over to your Facebook page or throw it on Twitter or something. Yep. Um, you know, you can do something similar with this if you have maybe a hotspot with you or the location has some type of public Wi-Fi or whatnot, you'll be able to take a picture and immediately send it off on its merry way. And it's got a ton of filters, Instagram filters type looking, you know, uh, I would say Instagram esque type filters and um, a lot of other little cool stuff that I could see like a teen or someone, um, you know, 
uh, be able to use and kind of enjoy. Yeah, it's the cool little filter things that they're just building into the camera. I mean, everybody's using their phones with apps to create all these all these different types of images and stuff. Well, now you can actually use go straight from the camera, use their built-in right. filter. What's really cool is it will basically give you a suggested filter based on the scene, which right, is really right. neat. So if it's do, if you're doing a landscape, it'll it'll suggest maybe one type of filter. If you're doing a portrait, it'll be another one. Um, and when right. yeah, when they have that mode where you can show five different ones at a time, I mean that's that's really cool too. Yeah, I like it. Not not bad. Not bad at all. So I tell you what, before we go any further, let's go ahead and take a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. All right, so we are back. You know, Joe, one of the other really cool things, LG has had these smart appliances and stuff for a little while now. And right. uh, they've kind of came out with a new product update line, but they've also really made it um, more integrated now with your smartphone. Right. So I would say this is not photography related, but it's definitely technology related. And it yeah. kind of um, what's interesting about it is that, um, you know, it integrates with your phone, your iPad, this type of thing. Um, you know, these devices are going to have um, NFC built into it, which a lot of the phones already, um, you know, have built in. If you don't know what that is, it's near field communication. It's, uh, you know, it's the, the thing that allows you to walk into your local Starbucks and when you get to the counter, they say, hello, Joseph, how are you doing? And I say, fine. So would you like your latte today? Yeah, absolutely. No problem. We have that for you. Go right, you know, step down to the end of the counter. You've already paid for it. Right. Yeah, you've <laughs> it's paid already through, done. Right. Um, they the, know who the you are. Right. They know who you are. They know they have your billing stuff. They the, your picture pops up. So NFC, you know, that the whole that whole idea is really cool, it, you know. And these devices are, you know, not only have this NFC built into it, but it also, these devices also have like a Wi-Fi built into it. So yeah. for example, they introduced um, like new washers, dryers, you know, all the normal stuff, um, you know, the little Roomba type of guy, you know, the little, they call it the uh, home bot. The home bot, goes yeah. In, <laughs> that goes in <laughs> That's vacuums. That's really cool, yeah. Really, you know, so everything is connected. So you can go to your LG TV, sit back with your, let's say your iPhone or your remote, and go and uh, let's say we want to pull up the HomeBots camera. And now you can see it kind of like, you know, swooping by the dog, or the dog kind of looking at it funny. And uh, that wouldn't you know, last by my dog. Yeah, that would <laughs> My that wouldn't shepherd last would too, jump on that thing dog. and mangle it. Yeah. yeah. So we have the Chihuahua. It would just freak out and that would be it. You yeah. know? You'd just hear oh, your little guy could ride it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yes. It would ride it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That'd be kind of cool. I want to see that. I'm going to put Nino on there and yeah. let him ride the thing. Awesome. But anyway, so it, the other thing that, that this has is that, you know, now that everything is connected, um, you know, these devices can very easily, let's say, phone home, so to speak. Yep. So let's say, you know, you're doing your laundry and you got your delicates in there, right? And your wife also does laundry for her delicates. Well, chances are your big fruit of dooms, you know, that are the size of a sheet. Um, but in comparison <laughs> you to your wife's, I got a fat yeah, ass. <laughs> in comparison to your wife's thongs are going to be a little bit different in weight and size. And it's going to use less water, obviously for hers compared to um, yours. Well, this thing can actually kind of reprogram itself. It sends back data on washing and uh, drying and all this stuff. And it can, it, you know, these devices can get better and better and better basically by communicating with, you know, a thousand, tens of thousands, maybe even a hundred thousand of these devices and get all of this great data yep. and constantly get better, use less water, be more efficient 
and on and on and on. So it's really yeah. pretty, you know, it's amazing. I never would think, you know, when I was a kid that this type of thing would be available. And, and here it is. I mean, now the refrigerators can give you a recipe, you know, and yep. it'll know what's inside the refrigerator. Well, and so, that's the thing, you know, this basic technology always starts life in the consumer industry. You know, right. and then it will move to other industries and and eventually it will move into the photography industry. It will change the way we interact with our cameras, with our equipment, with our, you know, tablet devices and, and everything. And that's, right. you know, that's what's really cool about this technology and staying on top of it and and being aware. I mean, it may not be relevant specifically to photography today, but it will be tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Because, you know. Uh, you know, as as the technology changes, our gigs change. Yep. You know, where years ago we would, you know, the old portrait photographers, they would take shots and these shots would be, you know, put onto large, you know, let's say on a canvas or on a, you know, on a just a just a large picture. You know, huge back then it was chemical prints. Yep. Um, but now, you know, it's all seen online. It's seen, you know, on your iPads, on many different devices. And we have different opportunities. I wouldn't say more or less, probably more, but um, let's say more opportunities, but definitely different opportunities to create images. So, right. you know, I could see, you know, LG going to a set of photographers that they want um, uh, food shots, let's say. And now all of the different recipes and stuff actually have the food shots right there on the screen on the LG, um, you know, on the on the uh, fridge. Sure. So there's a lot of a lot of cool things for yeah, sure yeah, that's going definitely. on with this stuff. And you know, back to the control with the phones. Well, the phones and the cameras are starting to have this line that they're bridging back and forth. You know, cameras are phones, phones are cameras, yeah. vice versa, back and forth. You know, now a lot of these cameras have Android based operating systems in them. They're yep. basically an Android computer just with like a lens sticking out of it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know why? Because they can't run iOS. <laughs> exactly. Apple won't let them. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. Well, we won't get into that. So who introduced some new uh, some new cameras? Of course, our one of our favorites, Polaroid. We, we yeah. did a really nice interview with Polaroid a couple of years back, right? Yeah, um, and it's really cool to see that these guys are trying to evolve. You know, I mean, they're insta thank God. Instamatic cameras. I mean, they were the the thing, right? Back in the 70s and the 80s, yes. you know? And, uh, you know, obviously a lot of that has gone by the wayside. Um, so they've tried to hang on, you know, to their companies with, you know, these little micro instinct, digital instinct cameras that put out these little postage stamp size prints. Yeah, um, anything. They yeah. did that for a little while, but it's nice to, nice to see they're evolving into in the interchangeable lens market now, which is kind right. of cool. Right, right. So they have, um, so Polaroid introduces three new um, Android based interchangeable lens cameras at CES. Yeah. And they're all very, very cool. I mean, the entry level starts at like 349, but you think about that, Trevor. Sure. You know, an interchangeable lens camera for 349. Not that's bad. pretty good. I mean, it's a point and not shoot bad. price, but now you can um, change lenses. Yeah. Yeah. What I like is um, uh, one of them has a 10 to 30 millimeter lens, but the, the most important part of it it's fixed so it's a 2.8 straight across mm -hmm. the 10 to 30 so it's not wandering you know i cannot stand the uh wandering lens um so you know it has a pop-up flash once again built-in wi-fi it's light as a feather which is you know the usual it does the full integration with facebook instagram and all the rest of the social media as we would expect them to do and they're introducing both zoom and the pancake lenses love the pancake lenses yeah. it makes the camera super small but the it's sharp you know tack sharp so you know i'm kind of interested and of course it, what's nice too is since it is um wi-fi enabled what's really cool is it's going to launch with 4.1 jelly bean but 4.2 will just be able to be a just a a, a up you know probably through the air or maybe wire yeah, over upgrade. the wi-fi yep yeah, I mean, it's just just think about that. Now we have cameras that have operating systems that can upgrade themselves instead of it being, you know, instead of you know, obsolescence. Oh, to do firmware like within and a, yeah, plug in within the a year. camera and make sure you do the right steps. Otherwise, you jack your camera yeah, completely. You brick your <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You the brick mess. your camera instead of bricking your phone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, we don't want that. No, and we don't want that. That's for sure. You know, there's another player in the phone 
I guess, uh, um, field or environment or, or area, mm-hmm. arena, Interesting. so to speak, that's coming out very, very soon. And it's dear to my heart because, you know, I am a Unix guy. But I tell you what, we'll talk about that in just a second. From phones, tablets, laptops, and PCs, these days photographers use multiple internet-connected devices. Have you ever wished you could view your Lightroom images, folders, collections, and metadata from any of these devices? Now you can. Mosaic Storage Systems has created Mosaic View, an application that gives you access to your images without exporting or using a publishing service. Mosaic also offers Mosaic Archive, which directly integrates with Lightroom as a powerful cloud backup solution. Mosaic gives photographers access to all of their images from anywhere on virtually any device. Try Mosaic View today for free and access 2,000 of your most recent images. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Mosaic is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans. Go to mosaicarchive.com and use coupon code DPC at checkout. Mosaic. Lightroom. Anywhere. Any device. Secure. Backed up. So, Joe, I know you're really excited about this. This is uh, yes. an Ubuntu phone operating system. And, Unbelievable. And this is, this is really cool. I mean, I watched some videos online here and stuff, and it's a really sleek looking OS running on this hardware you right. know it's so, really cool and it's kind of one of these agnostic um os's it doesn't it's not locked down specifically to a certain type of piece of hardware like an iphone and ios is um this is right. more flexible but i i really like the look of yeah. it it's interesting yeah so guys if you don't know what ubuntu is um basically it's a unix derivative um if you think about iOS, iOS is actually built on FreeBSD, BSDI, and you know this type of strain of Unix. But you know, over over the many years, Linux came out, and then there's a lot of subsets of Linux, mm-hmm. from Red Hat to um, this Ubuntu. Ubuntu is probably the one that's really got a stronghold on today's, um, let's say, um, folks. Um, whereas let's say eh, 10 years ago or eight years ago, it was Red Hat um, Linux. So right now it's Ubuntu and having an Ubuntu phone is really interesting because I've used Ubuntu for a long period of time. I'm like a system administrator on the back end. I can, you know, that's kind of my love passion, one of my passions, but um, to have a, hate. <laughs> it, sometimes it's a hate. Yeah. yeah. But um, so I have, you know, Unix machines with me at all times. I have, you know, Macs and I have, uh, you know, PCs. Um, You're just you know, a big I'm, old computer geek. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a geek. I'm saturated in this stuff. But, you know, I think Trevor having this, you know, they, they tout it as, you know, uh, for everyone that really wants, you know, the customization lovers. Right. You really want to customize your phone, like really customize your phone. Yep. You know, you know, they look at the, the kids that they're like, you know what? I don't want my dad's phone. He's got this iPhone thing. I want something that's very, and that's why, you know, a lot of these people are going towards Android. Well, Ubuntu is going to take this to a completely different level and it's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. exciting. I mean, Android users, you kind of have two, two sets of Android users. You have a group that, you know, is getting into a smartphone maybe for the first time. They're getting into the free phone that comes with their upgrade. It happens to be an Android phone. They don't really know all that much about it, but they want a smartphone and they're, that's kind of the group that is getting into it. Um, Then you have the other group of Android users that want Android specifically for the OS because it is flexible. It has, it's open source. The, it's an open development community. You can put all kinds of apps on it. You're not locked down um, as you are with the iPhone. So, you know, there's, that's really the kind of the group that this phone in OS will appeal to is more of the the geeks, people who really want to get in there and do something different. And like you said, you know, somebody who just wants a different operating system, you know, just to just to be different, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, you know, if if people have played with a Linux type of, um, you know, OS, chances are they're pretty geeky. You know, they're yep. they're the guys that, you know, they were the old guys that go into Radio Shack to go and build themselves a little robot, you know. Uh, <laughs> right. Now it's a different it's a different mindset completely. But um, you know, they're they're saying that you know. So the release date, um, guys, is going to be I think the beginning of two thousand fourteen, I believe. Yeah. So yeah, once that happens, while. what they're right, what they're saying is this could possibly gain enough traction 
to kind of, you know, take the Windows, let's say, 8 out of the loop completely and become the third player. So it would yeah. be, you know, the iOS, then Android, and then Ubuntu, which would be a Unix uh, base. So, right. you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I know that, you know, Microsoft is not happy at all with their current... <laughs> With the current offering and the amount of sales, because they, you know, I tell you what, Trev, they, I've been reading all kinds of things about this and they're, you know, it's basically lackluster. They're selling them, really but is. they're not selling them very well. Um, it's, you know, I thought that they would actually do a lot better than they are. And it just doesn't seem, you to know, be we happy. covered that mm. event and, uh, oh my it God. really was, was just, we live tweeted that. I don't know if oh everybody remembers or not, yes. but. You know, we're we're both kind of tweeting it and we're talking on Skype as we're as we're doing it and we're looking at it and we're like, well, okay, that's nice. And no, that's more of the same. And, you know, and they're trying to be all excited and energetic on the stage and trying to do a, you know, a, a Steve Jobs type of presentation. And it was kind of like, you know, it, yeah, just it was really lackluster, lackluster at best. I mean, it was boring. Yeah, <laughs> it was really <laughs> boring. And, and, you know, and and like I said, um, I'm open to anything. Uh, I have, sure. like, you know, from from Unix to um, to iOS to PC. Um, so I really don't care what what it is, what whatever the tool is to get the job done. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, what camera do you use? Well, I don't know. One, the one that works. I don't let me see which one it is. I don't even know. You know it's like, oh, it's this. And it's like, oh, does that do the yeah, whatever? It's just a tool. And the same right. thing with these, you know, um, uh, you know, I wish that, you know, Mac would have more um, software on it than it currently does. We are creatives. Most creatives out there are using Mac, right? Yep. Um, for the most part, you know, in schools, when I went to the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale for commercial art and advertising design and whatnot, you know, everything back then was just moving into all Macs. Right. Uh, when I worked at the agencies, it was always Macs. Everything yep. has always been like that. So, you know, I, I don't know. We'll we'll see what how this all plays out, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. It's a it's another player. Um, this really, this could be the the final nail in uh, Blackberry's <laughs> coffin, though. <laughs> I guess I think Rim. I mean, they're pretty much Rim is pretty yeah, much Rim, done anyway. Yeah. But yeah, as soon as yeah, so 2014. That's the prediction, right? Rim is yeah. done. Bum, bum, you know, I don't know. Bum bum. They can sell. They, you know, they can sell off whatever pieces of the puzzle that they have left. Maybe some. Um, you know, I don't know, some text data spectrum some or something. I yeah. don't know. Some mobile stuff of that's just you know, kind yeah. of whatever. Exactly. But uh, you know, one of the most interesting things that we saw that uh, that came through CES, which just is dear to my heart, um, is this really cool product that just came out um by Panasonic of all people. You yeah, know, for photographers. What is that? But I tell you what, before we get into that, let's go ahead and hear from our final sponsor. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drives. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where Shootproof comes in. At Shootproof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. Shootproof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. Shootproof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through Shootproof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All Shootproof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try Shootproof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Shootproof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. Shootproof. Upload, share, sell, print. So Panasonic debuted a 20-inch 4K resolution Windows tablet at CES. This is pretty exciting, huh, Joe? You it's, like this, huh? you know, yes. I, you know, I've been, and probably a lot of the photographers out there, they use a Wacom tablet of some, some size, um, you know, either the tablet that's, you know, that you're actually using the pen, um, you're writing on the screen, but you're writing on kind of like on your table, um, or the ones that are like a Cintiq that you actually are, you know, going and writing on the screen, you know, and right. has a built-in screen. Right. Um, you know, 
if you're, you know, if you're doing retouching in comparison, like for you, you know, you do a lot of illustration. It's very line. It's very vectory. Um, right. You know, having a thousand twenty four um, points of, uh, uh, let's say, pressure um, um, points uh, when actually drawing something or even more, 2048, or even higher than that, you know, 4096, or whatever it is, um, you can actually really feather stuff out really nicely. And being able to do so really kind of makes your work much easier when it comes to retouching, or if you're doing artwork and you're actually painting or whatever, because sure. you get a real feel. So it's more I tactile, really love yeah. the Wacom tablets, you know? Yep. But I tell you what, this Panasonic might be kind of, you know, putting them out to pasture. Yeah, I mean, it does, it is its own computer device. I mean, it is running right. a version of Windows 8, whether it's the full Windows 8 or like the the mobile version, um, that right, we don't that's know true. for sure. But it does give you this tablet pen type of interface with it. So you can interact with it and actually, you know, run applications and use a stylus, like you said. And right. if it is a full-blown version of Windows, you know, the PC guys out there that are using, um, you know, these computers that do their photo retouching and such, you could install these apps on here and actually right. use Photoshop and Lightroom right on this tablet device, which would be awesome. It's now, so awesome. I'm excited because if they do make this as more of an interface device at some point or, you know, take the screen, take the, the touch interface, the stylus interface and make it more as a as an input device, right. like a Wacom tablet. Um, that could be really interesting. I mean, 4K, that's yeah. incredibly high resolution. 20 inches, Four, yeah. um, that's a nice size to work on a a picture. Like you said, you know, for doing retouching, um, it really is a nice size to work at. Now, is it is it big enough to have your full desktop laid out and stuff? Eh, it's kind of pushing it, but. Well, you know, 20 inches though, That that is a very, very, that's that's big. I mean, normally like a Wacom tablet, you know, that you're working on is, you know, four inches, five inches, sure. six inches. It's yeah. really small. It's like the size of a um, mouse pad, yeah. But I tell you what, 4K, you know, when you work with 4K, I, I mean, if, if any of you guys have used a iPad and to the new iPads um, and use like the Photoshop type of things and actually, or like paint brushes and stuff, you can see how smooth that those, those brushes look and how the paint yep. goes on. Um, and, you know, that's at the, that's at probably half the resolution that this thing is going to be. So this sh this yeah. should be like liquid. You should be like painting, like for real painting. You know, I mean, it just it's really exciting. I you know, it's super thin. It's less than a half inch thin. Super light, which is a major major upgrade to like a Wacom. Now a Wacom has something similar out there. Um, I think it's called the Cintiq. It's like a twenty two inch, right? right? And that thing goes for like two thousand dollars. Yeah. And yeah, but it's true. like it's thick, you know, it's really thick and it is only an input device. So, you know, you still have to lead it into your computer and it's really fat and thick and you usually stand it up or you lay it down. You're kind of over it. So if they can do this thing at close to that 2000 mark, I think this thing is going to just be absolutely unbelievable. The one thing like you were kind of alluding to with the the Windows 8 thing, I would like to see a Mac version. Yeah, I mean, we need a Mac version. Most of the creatives, like we were just talking about, I mean, a lot of the companies out there, they're using Macs. Um, you know, there's a lot of PC. Well, that's why it would have to also, be an input but, device. I mean, Apple yeah. will never open up the operating system to allow it to be put on other devices. So Apple would actually have to create something like this themselves. But if Panasonic can use the technology and make it an input device that interfaces with your monitor port and your USB, right. Thunderbolt, or whatever inputs, sure. um, that could be great. It could be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything very, is very going cool. really super high resolution. I mean, just yeah. a couple of weeks ago, we talked about WordPress's update um, <laughs> to now include high, high yep. resolution graphics to look They look awesome, mobile. too. Oh, All those little beautiful. icons are just, you know, just... It, again, liquidy smooth. Bleeding I mean, sharp. It's, yeah, it's very nice. So this really is the way of the future. I mean, these low-resolution monitors that some of us are still working with that back in the day yeah. were just cutting edge. Yeah, they're pretty much dead. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much dead. Pretty much dead. We're up to, you know, 4K. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So I tell you what, Trev, we need to get out of here. Yes, I think so. So, Joe, if people want to connect with you, uh, where's the best place to send them? Uh, why don't we go over to Twitter? I love Twitter. You can find me over at Joseph 
Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Great. And you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Kermit. Excellent, Trevor. Well, and that's another show in the can. Tell you what, guys, keep those questions and comments coming, and we will see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.